Okay, uh, hello Year 12. This is a video. This is the first video um, in the new unit, which is the Religious Experiences unit. So this unit is looking at religious experiences, which is something that you looked at in GCSE. Um, so it's looking at whether religious experiences are good evidence for the existence of God. That's basically what the unit's about. Um, I'll talk more about the different elements of the unit uh, later, but I'm just going to introduce some of the concepts today. But mostly I'm going to talk about this particular scholar, Rudolf Otto, and the idea of numinous experiences. Uh, this is based on the slides that I usually use in a lesson about Rudolf Otto. And so, as you can see on the front, there's a few um, video links. I'll talk about those links and what's in them, but I'll also try to make them available in the... Um, uh, description below this video so that you can click on them if you want. Now this first video that I look at here is um, uh, is just a quite a weird video of, of like um, a lots of shots of nature and um, um, uh, sunsets and stars and all stuff like this which is designed to generate the sort of thing that Otto might be talking about when he talks about numinous experiences, this sense of awe and wonder, and we'll talk about that later. So I start with that clip usually just to see what people think of it. Um, but yeah, it's not that important really. Um, okay. So before we get on to Otto, here's the basic argument from religious experience. So the argument from religious experience is an argument for the existence of God. It's a bit different, though, to the other more philosophical arguments. So, and the way you'd state it in kind of philosophical logic is like this. Number one, if a person experiences something, then it exists. Number two, some people experience God. And number three, therefore, God exists. Now, this is a uh, what they call in philosophy a, lo a logically sound argument. If number one and number two are, th are true, then number three is true. And number one sounds seems... Uh, correct right if a person experiences something then it exists so if you're going to attack this argument if you're going to criticize it you've got to criticize number two which is some people experience god um and there's various ways you can do that i mean the one route that people often go down it seems to me when i first introduce these things to students is that um they say people are lying uh, who say they've experienced god which is possible but the difficulty is too many people have probably said they've had religious experiences for every one of them to be lying. Um, so it might be that we have to take it as true that some people think they've had religious experiences. Some people think they've experienced God, but it's a different question whether they have actually experienced God. So that's the basics of the argument from religious experience. And the rest of what we're gonna do in this unit is really looking at number two, have people actually experienced God or not? What reasons can we give or, or for and against accepting the truth of religious experiences. Okay, basically I've got a reading on Otto. Uh, now, this is a sort of reading that I we would go through in class and maybe add things to. So my suggestion is I will put in the uh, in the file section of the of the Microsoft Teams the reading. I'll also email it out because some people have told me that there have been some problems with um, getting files off that section of. Microsoft Teams, so I'll email it to you guys as well. Um, and so what I suggest is when you go through this video, when you watch this video, have that reading in front of you and then just add anything, read through it with me and then add anything that you think needs to be added in the margins. So Rudolf Otto um, was a German theologian. So theologian is someone who is like a philosopher of religion, but within a Christian tradition. So a theologian is usually it would be a believing Christian. So he's not someone who's looking from the outside in. He is very much a Christian. And he was interested in religious experiences. He was influenced in his work by another German theologian who was called Friedrich Schleiermacher. And those dates can't be right, can they? So that must be 1768 to 1834. Schleiermacher lived, yeah, I've put an extra nine in there for no reason. Now, Schleiermacher was a really influential figure in uh, Christian thought, and he argued that the heart of religion is not agreement to a set of doctrine, that's teachings, or a set of ethical rules, but personal religious experience. Schleiermacher believed that religious experience gives people a real understanding of the divine, that means of God, which requires no testing or further evidence. He went on to argue that all religious teachings are derived from religious experience. In other words, for Schleiermacher, religious experience is the origin and root of all religion. 
other aspects of religion, so doctrines, that's the teachings of the religion, ethical teachings, what's right and wrong, and so on, what attempts to work out the implications of religious experiences. And this is a really um, uh, important idea that Schleimacher put forward. It's controversial. Um, not all people definitely, definitely not all people agree. Um, but his basic idea is, yeah, that, that everything in religion stems from personal religious experience. People have religious experiences, and then all the rest of religion. So you could talk about the rituals that people do, you know, going to church, the services, having priests, having ideas about what's right and wrong having doctrines that you believe in, like whether it's the Trinity in Christianity or whether it's, um, you know, forgiveness for sins and all that kind of stuff. All of that comes out of religious experience. And actually, religious experience is more important than any of that stuff. So really, religion is at heart something that's about experiencing God directly um, rather than about um, beliefs or something else. Now, that's a controversial statement in some ways, because, of course, a lot of people have never experienced God or don't think they've had a religious experience. So some people might say, well, actually, religion's, religious experience is something that a few people have, but for the majority of people, it's based on something else. It's based on agreement to a set of teachings or something like that. So that was um, Klein. So Otto followed Schleinacher, so he also believed that experience was central to uh, of central importance to religion. He criticised other theologians of his day and the historical tradition, Christian tradition more generally, for trying to understand God only through rational arguments. Otto thought that the rational had a place in religion, but believed that the primary way in which God is understood is through direct experience, which is not rational. So I suppose Schleinacher is, is no, not Schleinacher, Otto here is kind of uh, criticising people, I, I suppose, like people who use arguments like the teleological argument and the cosmological argument to kind of argue in some kind of rational way that there must be a God or to argue in this very kind of um, logical and reasoned way that, you know, you can prove there's a God. His point is that um, religious experience is not rational. Religious experience is just a direct knowledge of something. It's not, you can't, uh, it's not something you could prove outside having the experience yourself. And he believes that religion is not about rationally arguing for something, like logically proving something. It's about having this direct experience of God. So again, he's putting re reason, not reason, sorry, he's putting experience right in the centre of how we understand religion. So in his most famous book, The Idea of the Holy, written in 1917, or published in 1917, Otto tried to show what is unique about religious experience and experiences which make them different from any other experience. Otto argued that religious experiences are experience of what he calls the numinous. That's a word that he coined, so he came up with that term. Numinous experiences, he argues, are sui generis. Sui generis means in a category of their own, so um, they're in a class by themselves, completely different from any other kind of experience. So he is saying, Religious experiences are a unique kind of experience. We use sui generis, didn't we, about the Buddha? We talk about that, I think, that the Buddha is, a, is in a category of own. He's, not, he's different from all other kinds of being. So his idea is that actually religious, there are lots of kinds of experiences we have in life, but religious experiences are a distinct, unique uh, kind of experience that are different from any other kind. But the question is, what are those new experiences? Mm. Went ahead on the slides there. Let's see if it works. Um, so there is a clip which uh, uh, I I will put a link to, which has this part of the book has it talking has a quite good animation with it. But he he says this to kind of describe what the numinous is like. He says he begins by asking the question, "How would you feel if there was a tiger in the next room?" And he said, "Well, you'd feel fear." So that's one kind of experience. Someone tells you, you're in a room, and someone tells you there's a tiger in the next room, you'd feel fear. He then says, well, okay, how would you feel if there was a ghost in the next room? And he says, well, you would feel fear if there was a ghost in the ne room next to you, but it would be a different kind of fear for than the kind of fear you feel if there's a tiger in the next room, because you fear the tiger because you think it's going to kill you, uh, it's dangerous, Whereas you fear the ghost, he says, not because of what it might do, but just because of what it is. It's the fear of what they call the uncanny. 
an uncanny, an old fashioned word meaning to mean the strange, the different, the kind of straight, yeah, just very, very odd and strange, so different and so unusual that it's frightening. So he says, look, there's two different kinds of fear. He then says, what might you feel if someone told you there wasn't a ghost, but there was a mighty spirit in the next room? Now, this is a bit of a leap, right? But because um, what is then a mighty spirit? But he says you would still feel a kind of fear, but he says you would feel less, it would still be less like the fear of a tiger, even than the fear of a ghost was. It would be less like that kind of fear of what something's going to do to you, but it would still be disturbing and strange and uh, scary in a way. And he says you would feel the need to bow down towards this spirit, to bow down towards this thing, because you knew you were in the presence of something greater than yourself. He quotes from Shakespeare, there's a line in Shakespeare where, I don't know what Shakespeare is talking about, but he says, uh, next to it, my genius is rebuked. So in other words, you would feel like, however great a person you were, you are lesser than this thing that's in the next room. Now, C.S. Lewis is obviously, is what he's trying to do there, is trying to get you to a sense of what the numinous is supposed to feel like. Because, you know, obviously God is not like a tiger. He's not really like a ghost, but he might be like a mighty spirit or something like a mighty spirit. And C.S. Lewis is trying to get you to this idea that numerous experiences involve some kind of fear, but maybe not what we ordinarily mean by fear. So let's go and see what what Otto says. If you watch the video, it probably make more sense than what I've said. So what are numinous experiences like? This is a difficult question to answer, as Otto claims that a feature of numinous experiences is that they are mysterious and inexpressible. In numinous experiences we encounter God, but what we experience shows us that God is incomprehensible and can never be captured in words. As they are unlike any other experience, mm -hmm. expressing numinous experiences in everyday language is futile. Futile means it can't be done, there's no point trying. Um, so... So that's an interesting thing about about numerous experiences, and it becomes very significant later when we do the criticisms. Is yeah, they are supposed to be um, very difficult to explain, or almost impossible to explain. You cannot completely express what they are like in language. I mean, in a way, that's that might make them sound um, like in some way meaningless or something like that. But on the other hand, God is in the tr Christian tradition supposed to be transcendent, so it would make sense that we couldn't really capture what he is like in words when we experience him. Okay, despite this, despite them being impossible to put into words completely, uh, Otto does argue that we can use words to give some sense of the nature of numerous experiences. So we can't say completely what they're like, we can't give you a complete account, but we can give you some idea. While words cannot capture the numerous accurately, they can be used as what he calls ideograms, to suggest something of the nature of the numinous. So they can kind of push you towards an understanding, even if they can't express it completely. So Otto goes on to use a number of ideas to describe the nature of numinous experiences. Firstly, numerous experiences involve a sense of the complete otherness and majesty of God. God is felt to be completely different from humanity, and the great power of God is strongly felt. In comparison to God, the individual undergoing the experience feels small, insignificant. Otto refers to this feeling as creature consciousness, the awareness of being a creation of a God who is infinitely greater than one, oneself. Otto says, It is the emotion of a creature submerged and overwhelmed by its own nothingness in contrast to that which is supreme above all creatures. So you feel like God is a mighty thing and you are insignificant in comparison to him. You're, he is the creator, you are just the thing he's created. Second, numinous experiences are characterised by a sense of both attraction and fear. The person feels drawn towards the divine, but at the same time feels an emotion similar to dread and terror. God is felt to be something overwhelmingly powerful and uncontrollable, but at the same time the person feels a sense of privilege to be in God's presence. Now that idea of a combination of attraction and fear goes by the name awe, A-W-E. It's uh, where we get the word awful and awesome. Uh, yeah, those kind of things. So, um, And it's interesting that because awesome means good nowadays and awful means bad. Um, but actually, um, the word awe and those words originally had, the, had a sense of inspiring awe. So they, they were like amazing 
but also fearful. So they've got the roots of good and bad within them. Uh, within numerous experiences, God is recognised as a being of ultimate importance. So you, you've realised that God is the most important thing that there is. And numerous experiences lead to longing for redemption and salvation in people who experience them. So you long to be accepted by God or to be somehow you feel like you're not worthy of God and you long to be worthy of of God to be, you know, so that would be in the Christian idea to be saved from your sins or to be accepted by God. OK, so those are numerous experiences. Otto insists that numerous experiences in, in numerous experiences, people are having real contact with a divine other. So they're really experiences of God and that these experiences are not merely psychological. He argues that all religions are based on such numerous experiences. Here's his quote. There is no religion in which it, the numinous, does not live as the real innermost core, and without it, no religion would be worthy of the name. So Otto, so, I mean, we're going to talk about this, but Otto doesn't really make us, in this terms of the, the philosophical arguments we're going to look at, Otto doesn't really spend any time saying why we should accept them as real, uh, numerous experiences. His point is merely that, yes, numinous, exper numinous experiences uh, are common, they happen all around the world, and that is probably true. There does seem to be evidence that that's true. Uh, they've been reported in many parts of the world, many different times and places. And so his point is, well, these are, they, this obviously proves that God exists because people are experiencing God. Um, that might sound to you a questionable claim because we could say, well, why, why can't we just explain them in a different way? Um, it also doesn't really explore that, but he just thinks it's true. However, though he thinks that all Christ religions are um, uh, based on numerous experiences, Otto, who's a Christian himself, argues that Christianity is the highest and most complete expression of the numinous. So amongst all religions, Christianity is the one that expresses the truth of religion, the truth of numinous experiences, the best. For this reason, argues that Christianity stands out in complete superiority over all sister religions. Otto gives mainly Christian examples when describing numerous experiences. One is from uh, the Christian mystic Julian of Norwich, who wrote this. So Julian of Norwich was a uh, 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 Christian living in Norwich in England um, in, uh, from 1342 to 1416, who was famous for writing a book based on her, and it is a her, uh, despite the name, um, Experiences of God. So she had many, many great experiences of God, apparently, and wrote them down. She says, The whole creation, wondering and astonished, will have for God a dread so great and reverent and beyond anything known before, that the very pillars of heaven will tremble and quake, as they marvel at the greatness of God, their maker, and the insignificance of all that is made. You can see there quite a lot of the characteristics that... that um, uh, of a numinous experience that Otto talks about. You know, you've got the idea of... Um, having a dread of God, feeling insignificant next to the greatness of God. Those are the sorts of ideas that Julian of Norwich expressed and that not Otto thinks are fundamental to numinous experience. Okay, last thing before we get to criticisms. Although he was aware of claims about forms of religious experience very different to his description of the numinous, Otto did not take other kinds of religious experience very seriously. For Otto, the numinous was the heart of all religion. And other experiences belong to what he called the vestibule of religion. Vestibule is like, um, like a, the the when you enter enter a building, it's the very beginning of the, uh, the 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 very first place that you go in before you go into the main main bit of the building. So what he means is that they're kind of just at the beginning of religion. So other kinds of the, so he's basically saying that other kinds of religious experience that are not numinous experiences are a bit more basic. They're not really the heart of religion. They're just kind of lesser experiences. Um, which is interesting because, you you know, if, if I was to compare two experiences, if someone said, you know, you might have someone having a numinous experience where they just said it was this amazing thing that was beyond language. And then someone else said, well, I actually spoke to God and he came down and spoke to me and I heard his words. For, for Otto, the he is basically saying that a vision of God or speaking to God is a lesser experience. Whereas we might feel like it seems like a better experience, right? You can actually find out direct stuff about God rather than having this rather vague, inexpressible experience. So that's an interesting thing. Otto doesn't think other kinds of experience are very important. 
Okay, that was a task we were gonna, you would have done in the class. Okay. Do numerous experiences prove that there is a God? So, um, we're going to look at how you might evaluate Otto, uh, mainly look at criticisms of his ideas. So, as I said before, Otto doesn't really argue for a long time to, to prove that numerous experiences show there's a God. He almost takes it for granted. And that might reflect the fact that what he was trying to do in his book was not, first and foremost, prove that God's existence. It was more he wanted to co to show that religious experience was the most important part of religion. So he's probably writing for an audience who already believed in God. Um, but for us, his argument would be based on just the simple fact that um, he thinks religion is based on numerous experience. There are lots of people who have numerous experiences. They well documented that people have these experiences with God. And therefore, there must be a God if people are having these experiences. Well, what the problem is? Well, I think this this video here, which, um, again, I'll try and put the link in, might go away to explaining this. I think we have looked at this in GCSE. I usually look at it in GCSE. This was the video of an atheist saying that he had had um, what would be called numinous or sometimes mystical that's another word that's often used, experiences. This guy's an American guy and he's an atheist and he basically says that he sometimes feels a great sense of awe and wonder. Usually he's talking about things like nature. So he talks, he talks about going walking in, the, in these mountain ranges in America and feeling a sense of smallness compared to the greatness of nature. Looking up at the stars in the sky and feeling a sense of being small compared to the greatness of nature there. But this guy does not interpret these experiences um, as experiences of God. He just experiences them as like feeling small compared to the natural world. You know, the, the famous bit I always remember from the thing is, he says, when I look up, these, look up the mountains and I feel really small, I think, is there something that created these mountains? And he says, oh, yes, there is. That's plate tectonics. So basically he's saying, you do feel small, you do feel this sense of awe and wonder, but what you're feeling and wonder about is not to do with there being a god, but to do with um, how great nature is. And so this he is basically arguing you do not need to be to believe in God to um, to have or to understand numinous experiences. So that's so that that's the video. Have a watch of it. It's quite interesting, maybe a bit silly, but uh, yeah, see what you think. So I'm just going to go through the criticisms of Otto. Okay, so this is linked to this first one. So, number one criticism: Otto's descriptions of the numinous uh, description of the numinous is ambiguous. Experiences which match Otto's definition of the numinous could be interpreted interpreted in a non-religious way as simply emotional feelings of awe and wonder. So that's what we talked about with the the, the guy uh, thing before, the video before. Now, this is important to get this right, how, how you word this next bit if you use it. So GCSA Gaskin, in his book The Quest for Eternity, published in 1984, makes a distinction between religious numerous experiences, which are specific to God, specifically of God, and more general, sorry, I'm missing M there, more general numerous experiences, which may be interpreted non-religiously. Now, GCA Gaskin, in his book, is not criticising Otto. He kind of is agreeing with Otto, but the very fact that you can ha you can divide numerous experiences into religious numerous experiences and non-religious numerous experiences um, gives us a way that we could argue. So we could criticize Otto. So an atheist critic could argue that, given the vagueness of Otto's experience descriptions of the numinous, all numerous experiences are open to non-religious interpretations. And that people who interpret these experiences religiously are doing so based on their prior religious beliefs. So, in other words, what what could what we could easily argue is, well, J. C. C. A. Gaskin is admitting that you can have non-religious numerous experiences, but what would actually make a religious numerous experience different from a non-religious one? Because numerous experiences are ones where you feel uh, a sense of awe and wonder, you feel dread and fear you feel small next to some great power. Now, it seems like if you were non-religious, you could explain that experience in a non-religious way. And so the allegation here, or the criticism here, is that people 
who have numerous experiences who think those are experiences of God are only doing so because they already believed in God beforehand. Okay, next. Otto argues that um, numerous experiences are ultimately ineffable and impossible to express in ordinary language, so we can't explain them. This raises the question of what we can learn from numerous experiences. Can such mysterious experiences tell us anything about God other than that is utterly beyond human language? Otto argues that we can use language to point towards the nature of the numinous, but he does not explain how we can judge which words are more suitable, are most suitable when expressing the inexpressible. This is a big problem. So he's saying that the most important part of religion is these kind of inexpressible numinous experiences, and all other parts of religion are built around these numinous experiences. But if they're inexpressible, how can we? How, how can they tell us anything? How can they really tell us anything about God? And so on. So you could argue they're just worthless. Whether, whether whatever they prove, they're just worthless because they don't really tell us anything about God. Furthermore, and perhaps more importantly, if we cannot express numerous experiences in language, this would seem to make comparisons between different religious experiences impossible. How can we know that two people who claim to have had religious experiences have experienced the same reality if they cannot put their experience into words? This calls into doubt Otto's claim that the numinous is the basis of all religion. How can we verify it? So this is a big problem. Numinous is, Otto is kind of saying, there is one kind of experience, the numinous experience, that all religion is based on. And if that was true, if everyone was having the same experience, that would be a very significant thing, you know, right? What if, if everyone, if lots of people down around the world are having very similar numinous experiences, it l at least could give some evidence that some kind of God exists. However, how can we tell if their experiences are the same? Because if two people haven't have an, a numinous experience, they're both going to say, Well, I couldn't really put it into words. Now, Otto would say, Aha, that means they they experience the same thing, they both can't put it into words, but um. It could be that the nature of the experiences were very different. Just because they can't put their experiences into words, they can't check whether they're the same as each other. So it once you start looking at it, the idea that people all around the world are having the same kind of numerous experiences is harder to uh, agree with. Okay, last criticism. As Otto was aware, not all religious experiences have, that have been reported are numinous in nature. Visions, voices, and other more easily expressible experiences are a major part of many religious traditions. Otto gives no justification for his decision to dismiss other experiences and focus only on the numinous. It could be argued that these experiences are more important religiously as they reveal truths about God that can be expressed in language. So I talked about that a bit ago, right? What, why is he saying, why are numinous experiences more important than, say, visions of God? In addition, in some religious traditions, we find ways of describing religious experiences which suggest a very different view of ultimate reality to that described by Otto. For example, some forms of Hinduism describe experiences of oneness with God, a sense of merging with the divine. This is very different to Otto's emphasis on the otherness of God. So instead, you know, in this is links back to Brahmanism when we did Buddhism, with Brahmanism developed into modern Hinduism. So you've got this idea that um, in, in Brahmanism that your soul or Atman become, can become one with God or Brahman and you can actually become part of God. Now that is completely different to the idea that God is completely different and other and greater than you and you are insignificant, you know. So that's a problem for Otto because Otto is saying every um, every religion is based on these similar kind of numerous experiences, but in some religions you seem to have completely different kind of experiences. So these differences suggest that Otto is wrong when he argues that numerous experiences are the basis of all religion. They also call into his question his belief that Christianity is the ultimate expression of the divine. It is possible that Otto, Otto comes to this conclusion because his understanding of religious experience is based on Christian teachings in the first place. So if you think about it like this, you could say, well, how does Otto... Otto believes in a religion which has a transcendent God. You know, you have this God who is beyond our understanding, and then you've got human beings who are so much less than God. And therefore, it's natural that he thinks religious experiences will... The real religious experiences will be ones in which you ex you feel this sense of God being much greater than you and you being much smaller than God. Um, 
because because his idea of religious experiences have come from from that idea anyway. And then when he's got the idea that this is what numerous experiences are like, um, he then looks at the different religions and says, "Oh, well, Christianity is the best religion because it's the most in line with numerous experiences." But he got his idea about numerous experiences from Christianity in the first place. So there's a big problem there, I think, which is that people, the way the sorts of experiences people have are actually, yes, something, these kind of mysterious, ineffable experiences are common throughout the world, but the exact nature of them, the way they're expressed is a bit different. Certainly the idea of merging with God is very different from the idea of feeling smaller and less than God. Okay, that is um, everything for Otto. So, you know, you, the thing, essential things you need to know. What what are the idea of um, religious experience being the heart of uh, of religion for Otto? The idea of what numerous experiences are like. The fact that Otto it doesn't provide much of an argument for believing religious experiences beyond the fact that he just he just feels like these are experiences lots of people have. He's basically just saying people have experience, numerous experiences, therefore there must be a god. But then we've got these key criticisms you need to know and I'd say the most important ones are one um, you can interpret numerous experiences um, non-religiously so we can accept that numerous experiences happen but we can don't have to accept that they're experiences of God and secondly I think this last criticism is important that last bit especially about um, about Hinduism it seems that in different cultures people interpret or, or express their ideas about religious experience in different ways, that could suggest that that um, rather than numerous experiences being this kind of universal thing that everyone has, it could be that people interpret these experiences based on their religious beliefs. It could be that um, Christians experience God being much greater than them because their religion has already told them that God is much greater than them. So that might suggest that it's not a re these aren't real experiences in the first place. Okay, so make sure you've done your reading. It, uh, like I said, it would have been best if you went through and annotated your reading while you were um, uh, watching this video. Um, I don't want you to, there's nothing, no particular piece of writing I want you to do based on Otto. Um, I just want you to make sure you've read the reading, highlight it, annotate it, whatever whatever you need to do to it to make sure that you, you've got those key facts. And uh, we'll come back with another video on religious experiences soon. Okay, thanks a lot.